it's important that the museum has the last front engine Stingray in the collection because it's truly a milestone in Corvette history. Uh, the Stingray nameplate holds such significance in Corvette history. Well, you know, I think that uh, it, it goes in a succession of cars. I think it's important to preserve historic cars in and I think it's nice when the museum can have some of those, uh, you know, one-of-a-kind cars in their collection. And the car behind me is the last front-engine Stingray Corvette that will ever be made. Well, it is an end of an era. We'll never see a front-engine Corvette again. We will likely never see or, uh, a manual transmission Corvette again. So this car represents um, the end of an era the end of the front engine Corvette, the end of the main oil transmission Corvette, and it absolutely belongs in the National Corvette Museum. So the relevance of this C7, the second to last car, uh, in a way is really important because it does mark the starting of the C7 with the Stingray and the ending of the C7, the last Stingray. And um, we made an intentional uh, collaborative effort with the museum to make sure that this car also had pedigree back to the original 1953 cars as it is a white car with red interior. There's a lot of lasts uh, of a kind sitting behind me. It's an incredible car and yet now it's being eclipsed by the, the new mid-engine Corvette. So having a car that's just an absolutely fantastic car but the last of its kind, I think that's a great thing to have in the museum. Well, the, the, the Corvette is an iconic car in and of itself, and the last Stingray Coupe uh, front engine manual transmission is an icon within itself as well. We all really try to work together to do everything that we can to preserve the history of this, this car. And uh, during the course of the planning of the final uh, production units, you know, it was General Motors and uh, Harlan Charles who came to Sean and asked him if there would be some interest in the museum getting one of these last cars and, and of course the museum accepted that. Um, we simply work together for the benefit of our customers, the benefit of the museum and the overall history of the car which is what the museum is here for. And uh, after some discussions with the you know, collections committee, collections team here at the museum, we determined that really the most significant of those would be the last Stingray. You know, we really started talking as a, the team here about which one of our donors, and, you know, which one of our members that are donors has that deep-rooted passion in Corvette history and also Corvette education. Yes, Ivan was one of the first names I heard when I joined the museum family. Um, over the summer and had a chance to meet with him at the reveal, the C8 reveal in Tustin, California. And I simply made the ask, Ivan, we have an opportunity to add to our collection an iconic car within, within an iconic brand. And with, before I even finished the ask, he said yes. Somehow thought of me is that I might be interested in, in uh, being a part of that to help acquire the, the car for the museum. And, uh, I thought it was an awesome opportunity and something that uh, would be great for the museum and I jumped right aboard. It's, it's a very much a bittersweet ending because the car has been so wildly successful. Every year it's won all kinds of awards, the Stingray won award, the Grand Sport, the Z06, the ZR1. Um, and to see this thing that has been so wildly successful and so wildly um, just received by our customers and by, by every aspect of uh, people around the world. So we're very happy and uh, very excited about the fact that this car is going to stay in Bowling Green and will be in the museum uh, forever. I really believe in the museum and, and what it does to preserve the history of the, the Corvette and serve the enthusiasts of the Corvette.